Hi everybody. Uh, right, well I've just had, or recently had, a letter from uh, the Prime Minister. I'm, I'm rather proud of it. Um, the Prime Minister's writing to me personally to tell me to stay in. Um, so I don't know who told him what about me, but anyway, there we go. So always a law-abiding citizen, so um, I've decided to, to stay in. So um, yeah, can't be everybody that gets one of these. Anyway. As I'm here, I thought I'd just briefly look at a few bits and pieces on sailing, and uh, uh, why not? There's nothing else to do at present other than garden. So, um, transferring a true course that you have calculated on your chart, and transferring it through to a compass course that you can give to your helm. Now, nowadays, with modern navigation, a lot of people tend to use GPS-derived courses and um, even true courses when they're giving Helm a course. Now, that's sometimes possible because true and magnetic uh, or true and compass might not be very far apart, but it's a bad habit to get into because in many parts of the world, you might be looking at a variation that's quite considerable. 20 or 30 degrees variation is not unheard of. So, how do we convert, excuse me, how do we convert from true to magnetic and then from magnetic to compass? So the first thing you need to understand is that there are two things that we need to allow for, variation and deviation. So variation relates to the geographic area that you're sailing in and that is uh, how magnetic north varies to true north on your chart. True north is always running north-south along, along a, a meridian line of longitude and um, it's important that you know the variation between that and magnetic north. Now certain parts of the world like the Australian Bight have a quite considerable variation so if you're sailing around there you need to know otherwise you're going to end up in New Zealand rather than Tasmania or New Zealand rather than Gold Coast if you're not careful. So in other parts of the world for instance in the Solent at the moment 2020 variation is very limited. Now this I say at the moment because it changes over time and if you look at an old chart I've got one over there I'll, I'll get that out in a second and show you but if you look at an old chart or so, so 15, 20 year old chart, which I happen to have Nokia around. Variation back in the, in about 2000, 2003 in the Solent was about three and a half degrees west. So you would have a difference of three and a half degrees between true and um, magnetic north in the Solent. Again, that might not seem like a lot, but when you add it to leeway or deduct it from leeway, um, and then add it in deviation, it can make quite a big difference. You could be looking at 10 degrees uh, difference between what you should be steering and what you are steering. So um, that's the first thing, variation. The second thing is deviation. Now deviation is not relative to the geography that you're sailing in, the, uh, the landscape that you're in. Um, that pertains to the boat that you're sailing on. So when a boat is first commissioned, and has its binnacle fitted and its compass installed, there is a need to swing the compass so that you can uh, uh, get it as accurate as possible to magnetic north. Now the reason it's not the same as magnetic north in most instances is because um, there's lumps of metal on a boat. So, And there's also things like electronic uh, um, um, equipment on the boat and all of this can can affect your compass. So if you've got a big lump of ferrous metal in, in the way of an engine which is not far away from your binnacle you might find that that has an effect on your compass. It will also and this is where it becomes a little bit different to variation it's not constant so dependent on which course you are steering the effect on the compass could be different. So um, when you swing the compass, you get a compass card, and that card is filled out um, so that you can see, for instance, at heading north, 
you might find that you've got no uh, deviation whatsoever, zero. Um, but then at um, 30 degrees, zero, three, zero, you might find you've got one degree east of variation. And then at 60 degrees and then at 90 degrees, and say at 90 degrees, you might have one degree west of, of, of deviation. So the deviation card is required to be in your nav station. And that deviation card is what you look at when you are applying deviation to take it from um, a true course to a compass course or from a compass course to a true course. And it's the part between magnetic and compass and compass and magnetic that deviation card relates to. The other part, variation, relates from true to magnetic and magnetic to true. OK, so that should be pretty simple, really. All we're doing is going from variation. Uh, sorry, that's not simple from true to magnetic. And to do that, we apply the variation in the area we're sailing in and then from magnetic to compass. And for that, we apply deviation for the vessel we're sailing on on the course we are currently on. OK, and then to go the other way around, of course, from compass, you apply deviation again to get to magnetic. And then from magnetic to true, you apply variation again. So you're just either going one way or the other way. So let's have a quick think about this. Let's assume that we are sailing in an area where the variation is currently, uh, let's say it's three degrees west, okay? Um, and we're sailing on a course of 272 uh, true. That's the course that we want to sail. That's a course to steer that we want to set. So 272 true. If we look at our deviation card, 270, which is close enough, shows that we've got a one degree east deviation. So I haven't, I've made that up, but we would obviously look at our deviation card, our compass card, for the course that we are wanting to steer, in this case 272, true. So 270, close enough, 270 on the compass card shows we've got a one degree east deviation. We know that in the area we're sailing in, we've got a variation of three degrees west. So we know our variation and our deviation. Where do we get our variation from? Well, from the compass rows on your chart. And if you aren't sure about how that works, then uh, I've done another video on the Mercator Admiralty chart. And that shows you, uh, in part of that video, shows you how to allow for time and the change of variation over time, depending on when your chart was published. Um, OK, so we have looked at our compass rows and we've got a three degree west variation and we've looked at our our uh, compass card and we can see that deviation at 270 true is uh, one degree east. So then we've got a couple of little uh, easy ways to remember this. Um, neither of them, well one of them is not uh, very politically correct but uh, let's live dangerously. So um, it's true, Oop. it's true virgins make dull company. I'm sure that's wrong, but uh, there we are. Um, so true virgins make dull company. That's the first thing to remember, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And then the second thing is cadet. C-A-D-E-T. Okay. So why do we need to remember those two? Well, first of all, if we are going to go and convert a true course to steer to a compass course to steer. We start at true and we end up at compass. So true virgins make dull company, compass. Right, so um, the next thing is, how do we apply variation and deviation? So that's where cadet comes in. So C, A, D, E, T. Okay, so C, add east to true. Okay, so compass to true, add east. So if you're going compass to true, add east. And so if you're going true to compass, take away west. So on the opposite side, it must be 
the opposite of that. So add west, take away east. OK. So next thing we need to do is do the calculation. So we had a 272 course to steer that we want to tell our helm what course they need to steer on the compass. So we've got a 272 true, which we got from the chart. We need to uh, adjust that for a compass course. So we've got true is 272, and we want to go to magnetic. If we're moving to magnetic, we look up here, True Virgins McDowell Company and Cadet, and we can see that we add westerly variation. Okay, variation is three. So add three degrees equals 275 degrees magnetic. So we were steering 272 true. We would have to steer 275 degrees magnetic, but we've got to allow for our particular compass. So we've still got to go from magnetic to compass. So magnetic to compass, okay, if we go magnetic to compass on this, we have got to add west and take away east. Well, deviation is east, one degree. So to get to compass from magnetic, we've got to take away that one degree. So minus one degree leaves us with two, seven, four degrees compass. So make sure that when you're writing down bearings, you make it clear what you're talking about. Is it true, magnetic, or compass? If it's true, write a T, capital T after it. Compass, capital C, magnetic, capital M. Um, otherwise, you're going to get confused. So looking at this example, we calculated the course to steer of 272, 272 degrees true. Once we applied variation and deviation, we then got to actually 274 degrees compass being what we needed to tell our helm. Now, any of you that sail will know that steering to two degrees of accuracy, especially in open ocean, well, you're a better man than I, but a um, woman but than I. But um, that is the theory. As I say, in certain parts of the world, you will find either that variation and deviation or variation is considerably different, or that if you're on a particular vessel, you might find deviation is, is bigger than this. And then the second thing is that you need to be aware that um, when these things add together, so when the errors add together, which sometimes they will, you might end up with a big difference, a 10 degree or a 15 degree difference. And then when you add into that the fact that you can't helm that accurately as well, you might end up with a big error of 15 or 20 degrees even with relatively small variation and deviation. On top of that, you've got to allow for the errors uh, of leeway. So I'm going to talk about leeway in another video, but all of these errors added together mean that you could end up with a very big um, error, which could result in you either going to the wrong place, getting lost, or having, uh, excuse me, having a problem hitting something that you didn't expect to be there. So uh, I hope that makes some sense. I'm um, I'm uh, going to go through leeway and other bits and pieces to do with uh, uh, chart plotting over the course of the next few weeks. And um, if you found this useful or if you've got any questions, then feel free to um, pop them in the comment section below. Thanks very much.